41 points from Kay Cunningham, and it still was not enough. 41 points, 15 or 21 shooting, and the Pistons still lose and break the single season losing streak record, despite, again, 41 points from Kay Cunningham. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Per usual, I'm your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day, despite how bad the Pistons are. Thank you for making us your first listen of every single day and supporting the podcast and supporting me. I'd really appreciate it. You can leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on, or give us a five, or I should say subscribe to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. You will hear more about Game Time later. But first, obviously, we are going to get into the Pistons breaking the single season losing streak record tonight with 27 straight losses. I'll say it again. The Detroit Pistons have broken the single season game losing streak record of 27 straight losses. Now, I incorrectly said in the last podcast that they had broken it already. No, that they, they tied it last podcast. Now they've officially broken it. And the game in which they broke it, their franchise player did quite literally everything he possibly could do to will this team to a victory. Everything he possibly could to get the Detroit Pistons our win. Kate Cunningham did everything he could. And they still lost. In the second half, Cade did not sit a single minute. Cade played the entire second half, all 24 minutes. And in the second half, are you ready for this? In the second half, he had 37 points on 13 of 16 shooting, 3 of 3 from deep, and 8 of 10 from the free throw line. 37 points on 13 of 16 shooting. 81%. Played all 24 minutes. Didn't sit for a single second. And despite this, the Detroit Pistons still lose. They have broken the single season losing streak record. Honestly, I think that I haven't went hard enough. Because I have tried, I, I, I've tried to be, I've tried not to go too hard, I think. But I'm done. I should have been done games ago. But this is what I'm this is what I need. I need Troy Weaver. I need Arn Tellum. And I need Monty Williams. And this is by no means any type of disrespect. This is not even on a disrespectful type of tip. Not not at all. Not coming at you like that. I'm gonna come at you on I'm coming at you on some real so, some some real stuff here, okay? I want you, one of you three, to tell me why you should still have your job. I, I want them to come out. What I want them to do, I want Monty, I want Troy, and I want Arn to come out. Not Tom Gores to come out and talk and tell us why, why, why you know, them doing charity work means all this shouldn't matter. I, I don't want Tom to come out and say that for us. I, I don't need Tom to come out and only take questions from select media members at 12 o'clock at night when everyone's sleeping. That's not what I need. That's not what I want to see happen. I don't want to hear from Tom about why, you know, we got to be careful and stick to the plan. I, that, nope, I don't want to hear any of that. I don't want to hear from Tom. I don't want to see Cade, who has been out to the presser three times in eight days, who has taken more accountability than any other person within this franchise. I don't want to hear from Cade who's taking, again, more accountability than anybody else on this franchise. Don't need to hear from him. I want to hear from Monty Williams, Troy Weaver, and Arn Tellum why they believe they should keep their jobs. That's what I want to know. Because if I come out and say why they lose their jobs, if I come out and say they should lose their jobs, if I come out and bring the reasons why they should have been fired yesterday, 
it will look like I'm being disrespectful. It will look like I'm not being respectful to them. It looks like that I'm not being fair to them, that I'm going out of bounds by calling for their jobs. If I come out and do it, that's what it looks like for, for me. That's what it looks like for me. So instead of me coming on here and saying what everybody already knows, what everybody across NBA landscape, not just Detroit, the NBA landscape already knows, instead of doing that and, and, and you know, ruffling some feathers and, you know, getting called out for being disrespectful, anything like that, Instead of me doing it, I want to hear from you guys. Tell me why you should keep your jobs. Tell me. Because I can't find a single reason why anybody, anyone, I don't care if Chauncey Billups was the head coach. I don't care if the most beloved Detroit athlete of all time was the Detroit Pistons jail manager or the Detroit Pistons head coach. After 27 straight losses, After 27 straight losses, after building a roster that is so bad that your franchise player can score 40 points in one week twice, twice, and still lose, he can play the entirety of the second half, miss three shots total, score 37 points, and still lose? Need you to tell me why you should keep your job. That's what I need. That's why I need, because we haven't seen, we haven't heard from Troy Weaver at all when it comes to that. We haven't heard, actually, not even when it comes to that, we haven't heard from Weaver at all. At all. As far as I'm concerned, the last time I heard from Weaver, for real, was when he wrote that pen, paper, not pen, he wrote that paper to Pistons fans about how he was so sorry for last season and how this year was going to be completely different. Little did I know that I did, I I must not have understood what he meant by different. I I thought he meant positively different. I, I, by no means did I think worse than NBA history different. Worse than NBA history different. I need to hear from you guys and tell me why you should keep your jobs. Why with this team on its way to being the worst team in NBA history. Guys, I need you guys to comprehend this. I am not exaggerating. I'm not joking. I'm not being, you know, uh, 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 dramatic, emotional. I I am being 100% dead ass with you guys right now. The Detroit Pistons are on par to be the worst team in NBA history. It is incredibly possible that they will be the worst team in NBA history this season. That is not a joke. That is not a funny ha-ha. That is not uh, over-exaggeration. They are seriously about to be the worst team in NBA history. Their league has been around for nearly 100 years. Why should anyone keep their jobs? Why? Why should anybody keep their jobs on the worst team in NBA history? I don't care if it was my mother that was the GM of the Pistons, my father. I don't care who it is. My bro- my wife, my wife could be the head coach of the team and I'd be on here demanding for her to be fired every single day. Who who in God's name, Jesus Christ could be the front office GM. He could be the head coach and I even think he would understand if I came up to him and said, "Jesus, you know, I I think you might need to go. Sorry, I, I think you might need to go back, man. I, I, it might be over with. I, I, he wouldn't even understand. Tell me why you should keep your job on the worst team in NBA history. And You guys hear that? That's crickets. Because there's not a single damn reason why you should keep your job on the worst team in NBA history. And again, this is on no disrespectful tip. This is not me coming at you personally or in your past uh, 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 jobs because Monty did a good job in Phoenix. I'm sure Monty will do fine in another situation w- and when eventually he gets another job sometime. I'm sure Troy Weaver has done good stuff with OKC when he was under Scott or, or, or Sam Presti. I'm sure he did some good things over there. And heck, maybe he can move on and be a great scout somewhere else. Like, this is not me coming at them personally. This is me just being real. This is me doing what my job is. On the worst team in NBA history, I would fire anybody in the existence of planet Earth. No one deserves to keep the job after this, especially after you just witnessed. Weaver, I saw you were in attendance for this one. When you witnessed Kay Cunningham play the way he played tonight, literally single-handedly try to will them to victory in the final minutes of this game and still not be enough again. There's no reason why anybody should be keeping their jobs. Anyone. Anyone. And again, for the final time, I'll say it again. This is not a disrespectful tip. This is just me being real. When we come back, I want to talk about why and how this game shows just how bad this roster is. And again, I'll say this for you guys before we even get into that topic, before I tell you guys about eBay Motors. Before we even get to any of that, let me just say this. I've said this multiple times in the podcast. 
I believe that there's about six to seven players on this NBA roster right now on this Pistons team that in five to six years will probably still be in the NBA and be role players somewhere else. That is probably what's going to happen. But the roster construction has been so bad that they don't fit with each other at all. You didn't get the the, the right players or the needed players to fit around them. It's so horrifically bad that you're setting every single one of these players to look awful and be failures that I promise you in five to six years, just like they've done with every Piston over the last 10 years, they will probably be role players. I wholeheartedly believe in my heart of hearts that just about every person the Pistons have drafted over the last four years can be a role player in the NBA at the very least for the next five to six years. But it can't be with the Detroit Pistons because they couldn't build a roster that made sense around any damn body. I got to tell you guys a little bit about eBay Motors, man. Our partners over at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd, and he's amazing, man. Check out Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd over on Twitter and obviously his podcast. He's absolutely fantastic to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. Whether you're prepping for a daily draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you with players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So let's see who Josh has picked out for us on this week's eBay Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. Jane Ivey. Lands on his list again. I think this is the third time in the last five weeks that Jay Ivey has found his way onto this list. And you know what? I think I might have to disagree with Josh here on this one. I think that some of the other options that he's put on here, Jalen Johnson, who's coming back from health, uh, coming back from his injury with the Atlanta Hawks, I think that would be a really sneaky good ad. Um, Jalen Johnson's a fine player. He's going to start getting some minutes. Dante Exum has played well uh, for the Dallas Mavericks. And Jason Kidd has said that, even when they're healthy, they're still trying to start Dante Exum. He's played really well. I think those are really good picks. Both those guys, honestly, Jay and Ivy, I'd stay away from over the last 12 games, shooting 25% from deep, 40% from the overall floor. Had a very rough game tonight against the Brooklyn Nets. So Jay and Ivy, I actually would stay away from him right now until he shows he can get out of this slump and the things are going to turn around for the Pistons. I think that's actually affecting him right now. But Dante Exum and Jalen Johnson, I think those are incredible picks from Josh Lloyd. Josh Lloyd, from Locked On Fantasy Basketball is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is all about each player being a perfect fit. And it's the same thing with your vehicle. I've told you guys many times over the last few years that when I was a delivery driver, my car would constantly fall apart and I constantly had to look for the right parts. And with eBay Motors, it made it super easy for me to do so. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, roof rack, bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or you'll get your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusion supply at ebaymotors.com. What's going on, everybody? Thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons first listen of every single day. Appreciate all of you guys who continue to support the podcast. The podcast I, I'm going to take time out and say this real quick, real quick, one positive. I honestly, I am blown away and I, I'm so thankful and grateful for all of you guys. The podcast has been doing record breaking numbers this season and for it, for it to be happening in a season where the Pistons are this bad, for you guys to come out and support me, how you guys have this season, support the podcast and join the community and, and grow our community. I, I want to start doing some like community things. Um, might start going live more on the YouTube channel, might try to do some more like fun stuff with the community because the community is growing fast, very rapidly. And I'm, I'm so happy to see it. And I'm glad that Pistons fans are finding a community to really, you know, unleash their anger really, and just, you know, be themselves and, and feel a part of something, um, with my podcast and with our community. So I appreciate all of you guys, man. I'm seriously so grateful for that. And, and to try to give some positivity to this team um I, I it's brought this and i'm very very thankful and and i appreciate you guys a ton seriously appreciate all of you guys now that's enough now we gotta get back to how bad the roster is this roster is piss poor it it, it really is it it's it, it's 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 terrible and i want to just point out the few examples from this game this game not not like because we've talked about how bad the roster is obviously i feel like hundreds of times and you guys remember you guys remember in the offseason, for those of you guys who have been around that long, you guys remember I was not high on this roster. 
I, I was critical of this roster in the offseason. I obviously wasn't critical enough. Let me tell you guys what happened in this game against the Brooklyn Nets to showcase just how bad the roster construction is. And again, like I said just a few minutes ago, there, there's probably six or seven players on this team. When, when I say, so like, for example, I, I tweeted out that Kay Cunningham is asked to make a gourmet meal out of the garbage that's in my trash can in the corner of the room, and it's unfair to him. When I say that, that is not talking about the players in and of, of themselves. I, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the the the, tra- the, 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 the pile of trash that's been assembled. You've taken like, like yeah, you might take well, what is it? Let, let's you know. Let's say say you take some ketchup and some mustard, and you take so a, a bunch of a bunch of random stuff. Yeah, on its own with with this, you know, with a burger, it might taste good. You know, you take some ketchup with that, it might taste good. But if you take some ketchup and start squirting on some cereal, and then you pour some water in the cereal, and then instead of pouring sugar in it, you pour some flour in it. Like all that stuff may do some good things with a different type of you know stuff going with it. But with this combination, combination is basically a pile of trash. That's what I mean. I'm not going at the individual players themselves. Just combined, it, it's a pile of trash. Okay, it's a pile of, of just trash, and that's what I mean. It's more, it's a shot at the front office and their construction, not at the individual players themselves. Just wanted to get that out the way in case any players happen to listen or see what I said. Again, it's not a shot at any specific players, really. It's it's just the combination. You guys get what I'm saying. You guys get the, uh, the 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 you know. You guys get what I'm saying. Anyways, I, I'm 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 going all over the place. Anyways, in this game, Asar Thompson. This is the first example. Asar Thompson only played eight minutes. Asar Thompson plays eight minutes in this game. You want to know why Asar Thompson played eight minutes in this game? You want to know why Asar Thompson is struggling to find consistent minutes now? It's because this roster was assembled in a way that it makes it damn near impossible. Now, actually, you know what? Let me not say damn near impossible because you could still do it. It probably just wouldn't work well enough to where a coach would keep doing it because of the way the roster is assembled. But the roster is assembled so badly that you it's almost impossible to put a lineup on the floor that uses Asar Thompson correctly. Remember a few weeks ago, I believe it was like two weeks ago, Monty Williams came out and said they were going to start using Asar Thompson more as a screen and roller. That happened for all two reps in that game. It happened maybe twice. It worked both times. We haven't seen it damn since. We, we, we haven't seen it. I, I don't think we've seen it one time since then. We haven't seen it at all. You want to know why? Because the Pistons don't have enough spacing to do it around him. You can't put a Sora Thompson on the floor with Isaiah Stewart and Jalen Duran and then say that you're going to run pick and roll with, I, with, with a Sora Thompson because then he's just going to be rolling into Isaiah Stewart and Jalen Duran. And even if you want to spot Isaiah Stewart up, we've talked about it numerous times in this podcast, he's just not a good enough shooter. I said it in the offseason. I said it last year. I said it two years ago. Stu is never going to be a good enough shooter at a high enough volume and demand the type of gravity where defenses are going to say we'd rather – we'd rather – This guy do something to give Stu a three-point shot. No, it's never going to be that. It's always going to be we'd rather give Stu this three-point shot than anything else on the floor. It's what's going to be every time. So you can't put a functional lineup that allows Asar to really play the way he wants. You could play him in the pick and roll, in the DHO game, running him off some zoom act. Like, you can't can't do any of that stuff with Asar. Let me just say you can't. You can, but it probably won't work at a high enough clip to where a coach – will want to continue to do it because the fit is clunky. That's the first thing. I don't even want to talk about the fact how when Asar Thompson is on the floor, all he gets relegated to now is just the corner. Because you could put the ball in his hands a little bit. I'm not saying he has to run the offense, but damn it, he can get to the basket and generate rim pressure and kick out. That's one of the best things about him. They're just not even using his versatile offensive skill set. Yeah, he can't shoot. Just because you can't shoot doesn't mean you have any kind of you don't have anything else to bring to the offense. He's a versatile offensive player, and they're just not using him any type of way. And I 10% of that blame, I'd say go on Monty. 90% of it, I think, goes directly to the roster construction. Because if they actually had some dudes that could space the damn floor and some bigs that maybe could space the floor, they could do some more stuff with them. I definitely feel like Monty could use them better, but I definitely also understand Monty's point. And I can definitely see his point of view that man, it's just hard for me to get to do that. It's, it's gonna be tough for me to do it with the roster I have. So that's the first reason, or the first example. Second example right here, Boyan Bogdanovich. He was supposed to come back and be the Pistons' savior. Why? Because he spaces the floor. What did I tell you guys the entire time Boyan was out? I said he may help the offense, but he is so bad defensively that it may it will weigh out, and there is an argument that it actually will weigh out negatively. Not just evenly, it will weigh out negatively because he'll give up more buckets on the defensive end than he will on the offensive end. What did you see? At the end of this game, 
when Kay Cunningham scored on back to back to back to back to back possessions. When Kay Cunningham was doing literally everything he possibly could do to will the Pistons to a win in the final three minutes, step back three, driving layup, and one another driving layup, crossover, taking his ankles on a hezzy cross that was just filthy as hell on his way to 41 points. What was happening? The Brooklyn Nets on the end of the end of the floor was attacking Boyan Bogdanovich every single possession. I'm not joking when I say that. They, it, it was every Single possession. You don't believe me? Go rewatch the game. It was every possession they were attacking Boyan Bogdanovich. So while Kate Cunningham is having to work his ass off on the offensive end to get every bucket he has to get, the Brooklyn Nets are basically at target practice and taking five shots for him shooting around the basket because they were just going after – it was literally ISO Boyan. And they were beating Boyan to the rim, and it was either resulting in layups, drawn fouls because Boyan couldn't stay in front of him, so he fouled him. He ended up fouling out this game. I wonder why. Or thirdly, someone had to rotate and help, and then you have Dorian Finney-Smith wide open in the corner hitting a three. Like, that's what was happening. That's what was happening. So the Pistons' savior was a guy who can bring some offense, obviously, but can't bring you anything on defense. So honestly, probably is a net negative nonetheless. Nonetheless. You want to hear the third example of how bad this roster construction is? Monty Williams noticed this. And this is the thing. This is... Monty is the coach of a 27-straight losing record team, okay? He, just like what I said in the first thing with Weaver and Tellum and everyone else, it's going to be hard for him to tell me why he deserves to keep his job. But the reason why I said Monty will probably be fine somewhere else when he eventually comes back to coaching, when they eventually do fire him at some point, or, you know, I don't want to disrespect what he did beforehand, it's because I know Monty sees these things. I, I know Monty sees what I'm seeing. Because if he didn't, he wouldn't have subbed in Kevin Knox and Star Thompson for 16 seconds. He subbed them in, in the fourth quarter for Boyan and Jane Ivey coming out of a timeout because he saw the Brooklyn Nets were just attacking them every time down the down on the defensive end. And his he knew that he had to get them out of there or they just weren't going to have a chance to stop them defensively. But what happened? They immediately fouled in the defensive end. Offensively, they couldn't hold up. So he had to get Boyan back in. Really, look, I, I don't think Monty's done a great job. And again, like I said, co- being a coach of a 27 straight loss team, it's hard for you to, to reason that you should keep your job. And I'm not making that reason. All I'm saying is this. He's being dealt a terrible hand. Uh, an absolutely terrible hand. Do I know? Do I? Can I say 100% sure that with a better hand he'd do better? I, I can't. I can't. And again, I'm not saying he should keep his job and he'd get to pass it at all. That's not what I'm saying at all. But I know for a fact he's seen the things I'm talking about. Because every now and then he does something, he sees how if he does one thing, it just opens up another hole in the, in the ship. He he knows it. And he just knows that there's really, he, it's just pick his poison at that point. And honestly, I agree with him at this, with what he did at the end of the game. If you have to pick your poison, the only the poison you have to pick is the one that makes it possible for your franchise to start to go off and keep you in the game. I mean, that's the only one you can do. And that's bring spacing to the floor. It's either that or hope that you have a good enough defense, which they don't. They don't if they do this lineup, by the way. Even if they do go defensive line, they don't have good enough defense. They stop them so much on the on that end that it creates open uh, shots on the other end. It's pick your poison. This roster's terrible. And by the way, the fact that Kevin Knox, I, I didn't even hit this point. Kevin Knox, I mean this in the most respectful way possible to Kevin Knox because he has played well, and I keep him in the rotation because he's played well. But if Kevin Knox is the dude you're subbing in to provide some more, some better defense, I, I, I ain't got to say it's nothing else about your roster construction. Kevin Knox, you want to bring him in for spacing? Okay. But if he's the guy you're bringing in because he gives you a better chance on the defensive end, you've lost it. You like You've lost the plot here. Like, I, I don't know what else to say to you. I don't know what else to say. This roster is terrible. It's bad. It, it's just the, the construction of it is terrible. And I'll say for the final time, six to seven of these players may be role players, I believe, for real, in, in four to five years still with another NBA team. But because of the analogy I use, you know, you got the ketchup with the mustard, and then you got some salt and some sugar with some water on it, with some flour. What does that create? A big pile of trash. That, that's what that is. Like, it's – the roster's bad, man. The rest is just bad. It's, it's, it's terrible, man. I, it's, it's, it's bad. It's bad. Let, let's, let, let's move on. Let's just move on. Before I can get into the next topic, though, i got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, one of my favorite sponsors, Game Time. And Game Time is one of my favorite out here because I like to buy tickets to sporting events, go to theater events, go to comedy events, obviously. I like to go to concerts with my wife and my friends. And the thing is about me is I'm a procrastinator. So I late, I wait for the last second all the time. And with any other place, it hurts me. It ends up getting me in the back. Okay. I end up getting terrible seats, end up paying terrible prices. 
because I wait to the last second. But with game time, it does not penalize you for waiting for the last second, so it saves people like me. I still get last-minute deals all the way up to the last second of an event. Heck, even after the event goes, you still have a chance to get some good deals, and you always can have some good seats available with game time. The fun thing about game time as well is that when you go to purchase your tickets, you don't have to worry about showing up to the whatever. It's a game or a theater event or a comedy event, whatever. You don't have to worry about showing up and having bad seats and be like, damn it, I picked the wrong seats. No, you get to look at the seats on the app before you purchase them. You can decide, are these good enough seats for you? You get to see what it looks like if you were to get those tickets. Game time is amazing. It's why I believe it's the best place to go if you're trying to find or trying to purchase any tickets out there. It's the best ticketing app out there. I promise you, you guys will love it. Download the, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N M B A for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed with Game Time. So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons, hit that subscribe button, or leave us a five star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. That's another great way to support the podcast. So look, man, I, as you guys can see, those of you guys who are watching on the YouTube, you guys can see on the side of the screen, there's nothing else to say. I ain't got nothing else to say. I, like, I, don't know what the, I don't know what else there is to say at this moment. Other than scream and yell about how this is terrible and scream and yell about how I don't see how anyone keeps their jobs on, on, a, on, you know, on a team like this. You know, outside of doing that, I, I don't know what else to say. I, I true, I truly, truly don't know what else to say. I could talk about how Jane Ivey struggled over the last 12 games, shooting 20, 25% from deep, 40% from the field. I can talk about Isaiah Stewart going 2 of 7 tonight from the field. I can talk about how Jalen Duran returned and looked all right in his time on the floor. I can talk about the fact that Marvin Bagley didn't play and James Wiseman played for him, and James Wiseman looked very bad. I can talk about how Killian Hayes didn't play in this game again, and it's quite clear how much how badly they're missing his their backup point guard off the bench. I can talk about how Isaiah Livers didn't play in this game. It looks like he's falling out the rotation with how bad he's playing this year. I can talk about all those things. But at the end of the day, nothing of none of that matters. It does and none of it matters. I, I I truly feel like I'd be doing a disservice to you guys if I came here and tried to talk about those things. I truly do. I truly do. I'd be doing a disservice to you guys if I came on here and talked about those things because that's not what matters right now. That's not what matters truly right now. It's not what needs to be said right now. And I, I don't know how many podcasts I'm going to do until something happens. But I, I'm going to continue to, you know, like I said weeks ago, I said this weeks ago, I'm going to continue to try to apply pressure and, and use my voice, my platform, to provide pressure because the Detroit Pistons that I grew up watching that made eight straight Eastern Conference Finals, then won a championship in 2004, the team that many of my older listeners watch won back-to-back championships, the team that all of us know is one of the most well-decorated franchises in the NBA has been around for a very, very long time. Very rich history. Does not deserve, does not deserve to be on this side of history. Does not deserve to be in the history books for this. And the people who are responsible for this need to be held accountable every second of every single day until they actually are held accountable. So that's what I'm going to do. And I, I I ain't got nothing else for you guys. Oh, I'll I'll throw this also this random stat. I was going to tell you guys uh, this random stat earlier in the podcast, but um yeah, the Pistons are last in the NBA in three pointers. Um tonight they made nine threes. Boyan and Cade made six of them. Boyan and Cade made six of the nine threes. They don't have anyone else that can make a three. Alec Burks made two tonight. He shot two of six. That 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 was record breaking for him since he's come back. It, it, he's been just he I, he's fallen off a cliff since he's been back. 
So, I mean, I guess it was cool to see that. But outside of Boyan and Cade, no one else can hit threes. The Pistons are last in the NBA, 33.5% from three as a team. They are also last in the NBA at getting up three-pointers. They take 29 and a half per game. Last in the NBA. And I, I, I know there's a lot of people who, you know, are still skeptical to analytics. And are still te- skeptical to analysis and the numbers. Even though they just simply tell you what you're seeing and tell you what's going on. And back you up. But whatever. I don't care how, how you know, how opposed you are to analytics. This is just a simple truth, man. This is just a simple truth. And this is coming from someone who's played basketball their whole lives, and my go-to shot is pull-up middies. I am a tough shot creator in the mid-range. That's that's what my shots are. If you watch any of the clips I post, I take a lot of pull-up jumpers, whether it's from three or mid-range. All of them are – a lot of mid-range shots, a lot of contested shots. So I, I don't play necessarily how I talk, okay? I, I'm probably the exact opposite of how I talk on here, how I play. It's crazy. But – it don't matter. If at a certain day it's a math problem. It really is. At a certain days it's a math. If you're not going to get enough threes up, if you're not going to make enough threes, you are simply just going to lose the game. You are not going to make enough twos to outweigh the amount of threes the other team makes. Like at the end of the day, I know people don't want to hear this. I'm sorry. I understand that basketball is not a math problem and it's not something you can just write on a spreadsheet. Okay, I get it. But at the end of the damn day, we all are smart enough to know that three is more than two. And if the other team makes 15 threes and you only take nine and make three, you are going to lose that game no matter how many twos you take. It, like, it, it just don't, it doesn't matter. And the fact that the Pistons consistently, not only are they the, take the, not only do they take the least amount of threes in the NBA, they also make the least amount of them. Like you get you you have zero chance at winning that, you you have zero chance. You just do. I, I'm sorry, sorry people don't want to hear that, but that's just the simple truth. You have zero chance at winning when those two things are what you're at the worst in the league at. Zero chance. No chance at pop at, at, in hell. Not a cold day in hell. Are you going to win a game doing that? It's just not going to happen. And, and again, it just goes back to the roster construction. It. Just, I talked about in the offseason. They said they acquired spacing. I questioned it all offseason because they did not add spacing. I, that's all I've got for you guys today, man. I got to go. I got to go take a drink of water and relax, man. You guys you guys stay safe out there. Thank you guys for supporting the podcast, making it your first listen every single day. Appreciate you guys. Stay safe out there. Catch you guys in the next one. Till next time, hopefully there's some help made. Hopefully there's some, I, I should say, change made to help Katie Cunningham um, and, 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 put Pistons fans out of their misery. Hopefully that happens by next time. But if it doesn't, stay safe out there, man. Until next time, peace out.